hear like I can hear what you see like I can see what you smell like I can love what, what you hate like. like I can hate what you love like I can taste what you smell like in your Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedelic here. This is Acid Archives entry number seven on my list. And I figured since we went around to titles like Heaven, Vulcan, The Kooky Bob Larson, New Breed, a lot of obscure titles, I figured let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to Ground Zero. Just a little bit of familiarity. So I decided to pick a major label US psych title and you know, I think out of all these, this might be the most familiar to you guys. So this is the Troll Animated Music Lone LP here on the Smash Records, which is the subsidiary of Mercury. This is also produced through Dunwich Productions, which signed a bunch of Chicago-based bands. This band's actually from Chicago. And before this LP, they had released like five singles under the name The Trolls plural and they were on like ABC label and the USA label based out of Chicago and I think they only released one single from this this was uh, the track Satin City News was the opening track and that's the A side and then the B side it's the opening track to side two Professor Potts Pornographic Projector that's a mouthful anyways came out in 68 and this is like I mean, just looking at the cover, too, it's kind of what you can expect a little bit. Pretty animated, pretty zany, pretty cartoony in spots. And this is kind of, this kind of fits into those bags of psycho peas where, you know, producers throw a lot of money towards a group, expecting some results. And I think a lot of side one is kind of a producer's sort of bag where they put a lot of string arrangements, trying to make some you know, notable key tracks here. And I think a lot of it kind of kickstarted with, you know, obviously albums like Sgt. Pepper and, you know, The Who with The Who Sell Out and Pretty Things, SF Sorrow, just a lot of those kind of conceptual records. It's not necessarily a concept record, but it's kind of like one of those key examples of where some of the music kind of flows together in spots and they kind of try throwing all these bag of tricks and studio tricks at you and I'd say a lot of them land pretty well there might I mean it's arguable that there are some inconsistencies on here I can definitely hear them but uh, the first track Satin City News kind of rocks it all off uh, kind of a simple kind of riff going on with some organ and kind of a steady groove and I think it works into it pretty well and then you got the next track Mr. Abernathy you know, kind of working with something like, say, uh, Penny Lane, you know, kind of, it's not really Beatles-like, but it's kind of something like maybe the Beatles would do. And, uh, you know, they eventually go into these different segues and, you know, use of sound effects and tape manipulation. But I think by side two, you know, the producers or whoever was kind of managing them at the time says it was produced by the troll, but obviously there was some a &R people, I'm sure, probably said to the boys, you know, hey, just go ahead and throw some of your own tricks out there and see what, see how the audience responds to it. And they definitely get a little freaky on side two, which is my favorite moments of the LP. Uh, I always said my favorite track was Werewolf and Witch Breath, which closes the track, closes the record. And I love that track. It's so spooky kind of got these eerie halloween vibes i even featured that in one of my halloween trip videos um you know it's got these kind of ghoulish effects and these kind of like eerie carnival ride kind of vibes uh with the organ which i love when bands kind of do that stuff you know kind of reminiscent of like ca quintet a little bit like with cold spider but my favorite track i think overall since i've re-listened to it i think it's actually morning of the day which i'm going to try to include here in the intro it's basically a five minute track but it has everything i love about us psych 
front to back. You know, it kind of starts out with these simple ideas, but then it kind of form formulates itself into like the kind of freaky zones. You know, like I said earlier, you know, a lot of vocal tape manipulation going on. It's got these kind of warping effects and, you know, plenty of that kind of tremolo fuzz guitar, or that vibrato fuzz guitar that I love. <laughs> You know, looking at the lyrics and listening to it, it, it almost reminds you of like necrophilia or something. I don't know what they're talking about. It's kind of strange, but that's what it's all about, baby. <laughs> but Morning of the Day, it's just a killer track, I think. It's got these just weird instruments thrown in. You know, there might be even a Jew harp in there in the beginning. But yeah, and Professor Potts' pornographic projector, it's got that kind of music hall, you know, silly quirkiness about it. And this album's kind of full of that too. It's got a lot of quirkiness to it. Um, pretty playful, pretty innocent. And you can definitely tell these guys definitely came from like garage roots, kind of trying to fit in with the pop market a little bit. Not necessarily a, you know, it's not on the levels of say, like I mentioned earlier, SF Sorrow or forever changes. I mean, there's no comparison there. But, you know, that's kind of why, why I like these second tier records, because they kind of venture off into some freaky zones occasionally, and just a lot of, like, thoughts within the mix, or thoughts just kind of entering the studio, and uh, which can very much make it inconsistent, you know, with the whole flow of the record. So yeah, I think that's basically all I got to cover on this. Um, kind of keeping it simple this time, but I'll read some info here on the back. Uh, recorded at Great Lakes, recording company, Sparta, Michigan. Supervised by Denwich. And horns and strings arranged by Skeet Busher, who I think worked with uh, American Breed and the Aorta album, also from Chicago. So definitely got some Chicago connections. Uh, this copy in particular, you know, it's definitely kind of worn. It still pops, but it's got some, you know, a little mild water damage on the bottom and some of the corners here. It's just how I found it was taped on the corner. And I got this for, you know, maybe a little below average, 40 bucks. Clean copy, clean wax, but I think generally, you know, ever since I bought it, I think it's kind of ranges between 50 and 100 bucks anymore. But let's see what the Est Archives has to say. And I kind of glanced at it. I think, yeah, Patrick Lumberg wrote this one. So it came out in 68. And this one does not include the lyric insert, unfortunately. So it says, an interesting Sergeant Pepperish bag of tricks from a Chicago band who had some non-LP 45s. It opens with an atypical raw fuzz rocker with growling vocals, after which at Mr. Abernathy zooms you right into the expected Brit-style pop quirkiness, well-written and charming like the Snow LP on Epic. Not a bad comparison there. This segs into the rather unfortunate Fritz und Sweeney, which proves that applying the Ray Davies short story idiom on the Third Reich is not a good idea, even as the music is pretty neat. The LP continues in the same hit-and-miss fashion, but the entertainment factor remains pretty high. The token Winchester Cathedral type music hall piece of shit is present. Although the lyrics are unusually off color, at best the band reaches the upscale post pepper cleverness of Mandrake Memorial and the second Fallen Angels, especially on the great winter song, as is typical for the genre. The album closes with a heavy freakout track with Hendrixy feedback which is the Werewolf and Witch Breath track. Animated music used to be overlooked, and while not a masterpiece by any means, 
It's a passable piece of late 60s UK style studio art pop with a few moves into grade A psychedelia. Incidentally, the Radioactive CD offers no track list except on the cover reproduction, which is almost impossible to read because it's a bootleg CD. <laughs> if it's on Radioactive or Phoenix or Revola and possibly our Karma. But yeah, like the book mentions, I pretty much agree with Patrick on this one. Although I may love it a little more than others, I can kind of get with why it's kind of a hit and miss affair. But if I had to like highlight the three big moments for me, or kind of the ones where they, you know, get a little more original and not to say that the string arrangement pop tracks are bad, you know, the slices of Baroque on here, but I'd say the heavier cuts and the more zany moments work for me. And that'd be like Satin City News, Morning of the Day, and then Werewolf and Witch Breath. But uh, primarily side two. Side one kind of sticks to those string arrangements, but Mr. Abernathy's pretty decent. So there you have it. So I want to kind of keep it short and sweet. Hope everyone has a good weekend. I'm filming this Thursday, but I will uh, push that out yet. I do have plenty to share. Um, as far as an update goes, I went to the Omaha Record Show uh, this pre previous Sunday, and I got some things locally, too, to talk about. So with that said, check out The Troll. And regarding Bob Larson yet, don't listen to rock music. And we shall see you down the road.